So we did end up only going to six of them, but we went to some good ones. So let me tell you about them. That's it. That's my intro. Hi, Amanda. You're watching Swan Entertainment. And today we are talking about Pokemon Centers in Japan. For those of you that aren't aware, I got back yesterday from two weeks in Japan. We went with the purpose of going for the Formula One Japanese Grand Prix in Suzuka, but you know, we extended the trip to do Universal, Disney, Godzilla Island, go check out that video. You know, we, we extended it for nerd stuff. So naturally when we had a free day in Nagoya and Scootish was like, you know, we should go to the Pokemon Center. Like it's not far. And then I realized that there was a possibility of us to go to several Pokemon Centers while we were in Japan. Naturally, this video was born. <laughs> I guess I'll just go in order of like each one and like what I liked about them and what I didn't. I think that's probably the best way to do this. Now, I believe there are currently 20 active Pokemon centers. A couple closed during lockdown and haven't reopened. So we went to six. Uh, we will go through the list. And one of them only Scootish went to because we flew into different airports, but we're showing you this one anyway because he sent me all the footage. But first, let me tell you about the sponsor for today's video, Helix Sleep. As you know, I travel quite a lot for my content. And so when I'm home, I need to make sure that I'm recharging the best way possible. And that means getting the best sleep possible. And that is where Helix Sleep comes in. Premium mattresses customized to fit your needs, conveniently shipped to your door. If you're thinking about getting Helix, the first thing you gotta do is go and take their Helix Sleep quiz. When you do the quiz, it's going to ask for your age, how tall you are, what your weight is, and also ask you about your sleeping preference. Like if you're a side sleeper, a back sleeper, if you ever wake up with shoulder or neck pain, and if you ever get too hot or too cold during the night. It's super quick and when you're done, you'll get your perfect Helix Sleep mattress fit. I'm a side sleeper and I toss and turn throughout the night and I got matched with the Helix Sleep Midnight Mattress. I slept on the mattress for a while before I went to Japan and then coming home and knowing that I was just gonna get a good solid night's sleep really helped with my jet lag. I just got back from Japan yesterday and I slept so good last night. Jet that lag has gotten nothing on me today. Helix delivers your mattress right to your door with free shipping to the US. The mattress comes rolled up in a box and is easy to set up. And they have a 100 night sleep trial so that you can make sure you absolutely love your Helix Sleep mattress. And they have flexible financing options and payment plans. Visit helixsleep.com slash swanentertainment to get 20% off your Helix mattress. And you will also get two free pillows. Again, that's helixsleep.com slash swanentertainment. And thank you again to Helix for sponsoring this video. The Pokemon centers are just Pokemon stores, basically. A lot of them have like, places to, you know, play the card game and some have places to customize merch and things like that. They're all designed super cool. They're all themed, obviously. And it's just to see the variations of going to several in the span of one trip was very cool. And so that's why I'm like, this is fun. <laughs> As you guys know me, I love attention to detail in stuff, okay? Especially in-person stuff, I love that. So the fact that there's this much detail in physical stores when I feel like so much of shopping these days has become very homogenous and very sterile, I thought this was a very cool thing. So after we went to Nagoya Castle, which was beautiful, it was raining, it was wonderful, very much enjoyed that, we went to the Pokemon Center Nagoya aptly named. What we realized a lot was that a lot of stations for the trains had essentially malls attached to them. And that's how we found the first Pokemon Center because Scootish had like his phone open. He's like, oh, it says we're like here. I think we have to go up. So typically where it would be, would be on like the top floor of any of these spots. Okay. So for Nagoya, it was in the top floor of this like mall center. And it was also next to a Disney store. That's typically what we found as well is that there would be like a Disney store, a Nintendo store. I wanted on the record that we went through every single level of this mall to get to this floor to get to this Pokemon Center. I will say Nagoya was a good one to start off with just because it's a good baseline, I think. There's nothing too crazy about it. It's just a solid Pokemon Center. So it was kind of a good like easing into things because if we'd started with say, 
you know, Shibuya, I think I would have been disappointed by this one at the start. Right away, you've got plushies everywhere. You got some figurines, statues of different Pokemon. You got cutouts of trainers next to them as well. There's a ton of Pokemon stickers everywhere. The sticker situation here was crazy. Oh my freaking goodness gracious. Are you vibrating? Yes. We've got plushies, 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 plushies. All the Pokemon plushies you can imagine they have. They also have their little uh, Pokemon card center as well where you can game. That was kind of off to the side a little bit and you'll see the difference between some of these. This one was just like slight chairs, some slight carpet variation to show like the actual cards themselves. Like it was a carpet print of the like playing table, playing mat, I don't know the words, on the table, which I do think is cool. What I liked about this as well is that on the walls, they have little silhouettes of the Pokemon. Even the, the table displays were matched to match the Pokemon Center. Then it was time to check out. I didn't get too good of a clip of the checkout center because I was trying to be careful with filming people. When I'm in a closed space like this for the mall, I do try and be a little more conscious of like filming in public. I usually am, especially when it comes to kids. There's kids in this footage. Um, we're gonna blur out any distinguishable faces, but I do try and be careful, especially when people are working to not film them as much as possible. My one critique overall for Nagoya, especially after I went to more of them, is that it felt fairly cramped and it's a big center, but comparatively, I think there, I don't know how you would even fix that because the logical thing would be getting rid of the card space, but I don't like the idea of getting rid of the card space. I think that's a very, fun thing that the Pokemon centers have. And not all of them have it, but I do like that Nagoya has one, but it's just, it, everything was a lot more cramped in there. And I don't think my footage accurately gets that, especially cause I just think the other Pokemon centers that we went to for the most part, there's one that's very tiny. We'll talk about that one as well. But the other ones for the most part were much more contained in a way that made it so that it didn't feel like you were just like shoving through everything or pushing through people to get around. This one, I felt like it was very much like mushed into everything. It was a little more difficult to look around at things because you're just kind of like on top of each other display as well as on top of each other in this one. Then it was time for Pokemon Center Osaka. Nagoya I did not have a Nintendo Center nearby, but uh, Osaka did, which was very cool. Right away, there's much more open space here at Osaka, which made me feel a little less like rushed, if that makes sense, to like kind of look around and see what there was and really take my time in the center. This one also, I would say, had a lot more color as far as the overall design of the shop went. Much more red than anything else, obviously. Still the same core colors of like, you know, the Pokemon centers with the gray and white and all of that. The card space as well was also much bigger and also much, I don't want to say better theme because I did like the idea of the carpet being the same as like the, the play mat. The Pokemon card game floor is checkered. The tables are all colorful and very clearly set. The chairs I think match much better than at Nagoya and they just overall have the giant walk-in like Pokeball emblem on the ground. It looks so good, just clean. And they've got the massive, you know, Pokemon card game uh, in letters on the ceiling. Uh, as well with the screen and all of that. And I just think, I don't know, as far as like the, the card game space goes, looks much better than Nagoya. Just saying, like Nagoya, I think is, it's good to have that because again, I think that that's something that's really great for the, the Pokemon centers to have. But I just think that Osaka just looks better. Going into overall, all of the uh, different spots that we went to, not just the Pokemon centers, but all of them, me and Scootish were fully prepared to like pay our rent on stuff, okay? And... Maybe it's just because the yen is not particularly strong right now that that just didn't really happen. But then we also learned while we were there, which we knew going in, but like just didn't even think it would affect things that much, which is stupid. Um, Golden week is happening at the end of April. Okay, I think this will come out before then. So a lot of previous season specialty items were already sold out and they weren't putting anything new out because they were getting ready for Golden Week. That's kind of where it's like, we spent a lot of money, but like not nearly as much as we had even budgeted for really. I would say. And then we went to Pokemon Center Shibuya. This one, it's a really good thing we didn't start with this because I think that would have been really much a problem um, because they have a giant Mewtwo in a chamber. We have to pass by it to go into the store. And the entryway as well, like I said, the other stores are, Nagoya was kind of open, but cramped. Osaka was definitely open, but I would still say more contained. Like it felt like they had more space. This one was did not have, I would say enough space for the store itself. It still felt a little cramped, but they had a little bit different of a variety in there because this one was very much more emphasized on the art relating to Pokemon, okay? They still had all the stuff for the most part um, that all the other sh uh, Pokemon centers had, but they also had like a bunch of stuff for the jewelry 
as well as like bedazzled phone cases and things like that. And I'm not saying that they didn't have those at the other spots. I didn't necessarily see them, but it seemed like they were definitely highlighting it more here because outside of the Mew, they also had like a bunch of art surrounding that whole entryway that you went through, that tunnel that you went through, that tunnel alone. This puts this at the top of the list. This is so cool. <laughs> and then we walk in and it's just all decked out in black and like lights. It's so cool. Much more, I don't want to say cohesive. This one definitely feels more sleek, I would say. A little more modern. I like the other styles of the Poke Centers, especially I really liked Osaka. But I definitely think that this one as well just kind of feels like ultra futuristic Pokemon. Like it, it just feels very cool. I like it a lot. They also had the Pokemon design lab where you could literally like design your own shirts, I believe. We didn't do that because we, we would have to wait for our shirts to be done and we had two other Poke spots to get to that day. Then we went to Pokemon Center Mega Tokyo. Now this was in Shun Sunshine City. This one was also in a mall and outside of the store in the planters, they had the figures that they had in some of the other stores out and about in these planters, which was really, really cool because you could actually get up at close and personal with them more and see the detail of the different figures. This one I felt as well was really executed super well because of, again, the space, there's a ton of space in the Mega Tokyo location, but also because of where it's at in the mall, they were able to utilize way more space outside of the center itself than just like inside the center. So like they had tapestries around, they had, you know, different spots for photos outside of it as well. Well, like I said, you got the Pokemon figurines in the planters outside of the Pokemon Center itself. Cool light up entrance. Everything is super cool and detailed. You've got emblems on the ceiling. You've got way more space. Everything is way more spread out here. Plushies on plushies on plushies, obviously. If you go to Mega Tokyo, I highly recommend just walking around that top floor of the mall, especially around the backside of the uh, Pokemon Center because you're going to find like art pieces. You're going, there's a spot that I found where it's like you're literally continuing take your height photo with like different Pikachus, very fun. Also across the way from here is a Pikachu Sweets by Pokemon Cafe. Their one food item that they have is like a waffle with icing in the shape of Pikachu and then drinks. I got like a tea latte or whatever. Uh, Scootish got a like iced tea. Also on the top floor, they have the Pokemon card game store as well, where it's just a full dedicated spot for the card game, which I think also contributes to the fact that the Pokemon Center itself doesn't feel too cramped. And then what I thought was the coolest part, they have a Pokemon Go center as well in this mall where it's literally just a full uh, Pokemon, Pokemon Go Center. So it's like the mini Pokemon spot itself. They've got the big uh, Poke Spot symbol right in there. They've got plushies, they've got stickers, they've got it all, but they have the Pokemon Go team leaders. You know, they're life-size statues of them, which is super cool. I don't know, it's just a super cool, like just to be able to walk around and see this was really cool with like top defenders right there. Like it's such, if you were to pick one, you get the most out of Mega Tokyo because it's Mega Tokyo. Then we kind of went back and forth. We thought about doing the Sky Tree, but it would have been a little further out of our way to go to Sky Tree. So instead we did one that would bring us back closer to our hotel, which was a little tiny and it was Pokemon store inside of a station mall again. And again, we thought this was gonna be a full Pokemon center, which technically it was, it was still a Pokemon center, but it was a Pokemon store, it, which there all are, but like it literally says Pokemon store versus Pokemon center on the top, but the Pokemon center branding is still everywhere. How much the Pokemon center is just a little itty bitty store. Not quite a Pokemon center. This one was not like in a mall, this was like, underground in the station mall center. Could we have skipped this? Yes. I'm glad we didn't though, because again, it puts more into perspective the other ones that I think we did. But this one, again, very much Pikachu centric, some cards, some toys, you know, the, the pretty much just standard little Pokemon Center stuff. You still got the, the silhouettes of the Pokemons on the border of the top, which looks nice still. But yeah, just kind of a smart, small little spot. I didn't even buy anything at this one. Scooters thought I abandoned him at one point because he was still looking around to buy more stuff. And I was already like out wandering the rest of the shops in this area. All in all, the best one hands down, I think, I really like Shibuya because I like the details of that one. And I like the extra stuff. Between the two, I think Mega City and Shibuya, I think are the best. 
for the ones that I went to. Now we also have Narita. Narita is the one at the Narita airport because what happened was me and Scooters traveled separately to get to Japan. He traveled to Narita airport and then to Nagoya for the Grand Prix. I traveled to Tokyo Haneda airport and then to Nagoya for the Grand Prix. All right, so, but in Narita, they have a bunch of Pokemon stuff, including Pokemon Center Narita. Here is his footage of that. This folder is empty. Thank you, Scootish. All right, here is the clip of the Pokemon store in Narita Airport. And this is from Scootish, so I have no idea what he actually got. He did tell me about the Pilot Pikachu plushies, and I'm really upset about that because the Mount Fuji one we didn't go to also had a Pikachu plushie in Mount Fuji, and so I'm really annoyed because none of the ones we went to had the specialty uh, Pikachus like the ones he went to. And he didn't buy the Pikachu Pilot plushie, which is disrespectful, frankly. I feel like they highlighted more of the snacky stuff here, it looks like. They all have the snacks, but I definitely didn't highlight those in the footage that I got. From the looks of this, this one is only, gosh, is it even smaller or slightly larger? I can't tell. It might be the same size as the one that we saw in the station, but I feel like this one just feels just less cramped looking at it. Interesting, but I know obviously the one we went to, there was way more people in it, so I think that probably contributed to it. And this one obviously has far less inventory because it's just in an airport, but I don't know, I like the little pilot Pikachu. I'm really pumped I didn't get one of those plushies. So that is how I went to all of the Pokemon centers in Japan. I have every intention of going back to Japan. I would be back there right now if I didn't have other work I have to do here in the US. But I have a bunch of friends as well that wanna go with me in the future, so I will absolutely be going to more Pokemon centers next time I'm in Japan. I'm okay with missing Skytree. I would have liked to have seen it, however, the one that I'm really upset about is that if I had gone to the Mount Fuji one, they had a Pikachu in like a Mount Fuji. I'm very upset. I rode by Mount Fuji on the bullet train. I did not go to Mount Fuji this trip. So therefore I have to go back just for that Pikachu alone. Anyways, that's going to be it. Have you ever been to any of the Pokemon centers? Have you been to any of the Pokemon centers that are still currently closed because of lockdown? Is there a Pokemon center that I didn't go to that you're like, I can't believe you missed this one. Oh my God, cringe. Let me know, comment down below. Reminder, I stream on Twitch. Reminder, the Swell Entertainment is now available on Spotify. Reminder to use code SWELL for 10% off on gamer subs. Shout out to my patrons. Thank you so much for supporting on Patreon. I'm also to more Patreon. Let me listen down below. Like to follow me on social media. We all appear, and that's me. Have a lovely day. Goodbye. And that's gonna be have a lovely day. Gotta catch them all. No, that's. That's cringy. Thank you, Oz, Eva, Ayana, Abby, Angel, Goth, Glenn, Palace, Pink, Jasmine, Lauren, Amy, Aslan, Medic, Rosie, Victor, Andrew, Tenzin, Sam, Mae West, Michael, Ryan, Adira, Nathan, Zwink, Literal, Jeffrey, Randy, QWERTY, Nomad, Thomas, Tasha, Donnie, Winter, Kenny, Robert, Cameron, Elliot.